Hello there. The title caught your attention, didn't it, right? You may have heard about new Adobe Terms and Conditions, uh, and if you didn't, let me read some of it to you. Our access to your content. We may access, view, or listen to your content through both automated and manual methods. Our automated systems may analyze your content and creative cloud customer fonts using techniques such as machine learning in order to improve our service and software and the user experience. There is more. This was, this was from point 2.2. 2. Here is something from 4.2. License to your content. You grant us a non-exclusive worldwide royalty-free sub-licensable license to use, reproduce, publicly display, distribute, modify, create derivative works based on, publicly perform and translate the content. For example, we may sub-license our right to the content to our service providers or to other users to allow the service and software to operate as intended. Rightfully so, uh, Adobe was uh, under public fire for the past 10 days or so uh, over these new terms because basically you had to accept them if you have been a subscriber uh, to their software because otherwise if you didn't accept the new terms and conditions you couldn't uh, no longer access your content, your own content and your paid software, right? You had to accept new terms or be gone. And this is the world we live in, right? We accept these cloud uh, native software and we agree with everything they serve on us. And then later we may cry a little bit. But here's a little bit of development uh, from June 10th. Uh, from The Verge, Adobe overalls uh, terms of service to say it won't train AI on customers' work. So this is after the backlash, right? We had to, I mean, you had to, I didn't do anything. People have complained and Adobe has uh, scaled back on their new terms and conditions. We have never trained generative AI on our customers' content. We have never taken ownership of a customer's work and we have never allowed access to customer content beyond what's legally required. We haven't done this, we haven't done this, we haven't done that, but we did put it in terms of conditions just in case if we decide to do some of these nasty things so that we are legally covered, right? Tell me, how do you like this? If you are an Adobe user, do you really like this? Or how, how, do you, how do you put it on a scale? How do you weight it? Uh, do you prefer to have the best tools for the job and accept whatever the terms of uh, conditions are? Or would you rather have something that uh, grants you complete freedom but ni might not be the best tool for the job? What, what's, what's more important to you? In my opinion, we are heading very close to the point where the operating system is no longer going to be a problem for Adobe users, for creative users. I'm, what, I'm, what I'm saying is that people are going to drop their Adobe licenses, uh, maybe not all of them, of course, but some of them will start to be dropping their uh, subscriptions to Adobe and searching for alternatives. Maybe they, were, they, will, they will search for alternatives on Windows or on Mac, and these alternatives are also going to be available on Linux, and this is uh, basically the title of my video, right? Let me know what you think about this and how many of users are going to actually learn something from this and how many of users are going to actually start taking ownership of their actual work. How many users are going to be okay with Adobe having a non-exclusive worldwide royalty-free sub-licensable license to use, reproduce, publicly display, distribute, modify, create derivative work based on public perform and translate of your content.